Thanks for the opportunity. Very happy to be a part of the large Rutgers community to celebrate 50 years of PDP. So happy birthday, PDP. So my lab studies protein complex structures and want to capture how they perform their functions in cellular settings using a bioimaging tool called crawl electron tomography. So today I'm gonna to show you a short story on how we apply crawl ET to study 3D structures of a fungal membrane enzyme called glucan synthase. So this enzyme has been serving as a drug target for the past 20 years. But unfortunately, the high resolution structure of this enzyme has not been resolved by any experimental approach because of the technical difficulties in purification. So fungal infections, a major social burden for the US and also for the world. Invasive fungal infections affect over 1 billion people worldwide and cause over 1 million people deaths. So according to CDC data, millions of Americans affected annually and they will spend multiple billions of dollars in medical cost. So species in Aspergillus, Candida, and uh, Cryptococcus are the most common human pathogenic species, Candida being number one, account for over 23,000 cases every year. So compared to antibacterial drugs, we have to say the range of antifungal drugs is limited because fungal cells, they are eukaryotic. They share some common features with us, but they also have some unique features that we can use to advance their infection. One of them, for example, is the unique membrane lipid composition. In our cells, the principal sterile composition is cholesterol. In fungal cells, it's called progesterol. So two categories of drugs, a drug has been developed against this lipid composition. One of them, polyns, basically combines to this particular lipid and then destabilize plasma membrane. The second category, azos, can directly inhibit progesterone biosynthesis. The second unique feature of a fungal cell is the very unique cell wall. We don't have a cell wall. So the drug develop a target, this structure is called a kinocandins. So this drug is the newest member of the antifungal drug classes. The first one, casco function was approved by FDA in 2001. So this drug is very efficient, inhibit activities, inhibit infection by candida, including those species that develop azo resistance. So if we use, for example, casco function trait of candida species, we can see very obviously they show inhibition of growth and also membrane, the whole cell develop deformed, the membrane deformed cell wall at higher concentration, 100% minimal inhibitory co concentration, you actually can see there are only cellular debris left, suggesting both the cell membrane and also the cell wall structure are completely destroyed. Fungal cell wall is different than higher plant cell wall. They are very complex matrix of polysaccharide and proteins. They can be separated into two layers. The inner layer is more homogeneous and more conserved, composed of mostly chitin and glucan. The outer layer is more heterogeneous, and then the composition can vary depending on the species and also the growth stage of the cell. So glucan is the most abundant structure in the inner layer. It also serves as the scaffold for attachment of the outer layer sugars and proteins. The enzyme glucan synthesis synthesizes glucan fibers in the inner layer. And this enzyme is the target of the achinokinin drugs. So glucan synthesis is actually made of two subunits. The large catalytic subunit is membrane embedded, encoded by IPKS genes. And then it also made of a small soluble regulatory subunit. Achinokinins target the integral membrane subunit, but currently there are no 3D structure for this membrane embedded subunit available. So tomology modeling 
tomology models based on analysis of primary sequence and also for from uh, mutagenesis screening mapped the N terminal to the cytosolic site and also the catalytic domain to the cytosolic site. And for the clinical resistance involving mutation on three specific hotspot regions, all three hotspot regions are mapped externally to the actor domain of the enzyme. But the idea would be a kind of kinding will binds to the enzyme from outside and somehow the signal is transduced into the catalytic domain to inhibit activity of the enzyme. But exactly where the drug binds to this enzyme and then what is the molecular mechanism of the drug action is largely unknown. So as Stephen mentioned in his talk earlier this year, AlphaFold released their database of structural predictions. And um, Lucas Sinsis from East also is one of the members who is released with their prediction. So if we look at this structure from AlphaFold prediction, it's very clearly predict the transmembrane alpha helices and also some of the large alpha helices in the cytosolic athletic domain. But the N-terminal regions, actor domains, and also the joint regions connecting those secondary structural elements has a very low confidence level. So that tells us basically we may not want to trust the overall domain organization of the whole prediction structure to really resolve the structure of the protein complex by experimental approaches, we decided to use prior electron tomography. So prior electron tomography, basically we can see it as doing CT to your sample. In a TEM, you load your sample, take image of your sample from different tilting angles. Each image will contain information of your sample from a particular angle. Then in a computer, you back project all the images to regenerate the 3D structure of your sample. Using this approach, we do not have to purify glucan synthesis from the membrane. We can use the whole plasma membrane as the sample to study membrane embedded structure of glucan synthesis. So we started from protoplasts. Protoplasts, basically, you can see them as cell wall less fungal cells. So this protoplast, they, when they are incubated, it incubated in lipid medium with all the right substrate, they will be able to regenerate the cell wall and revert into the normal phenotype. That tells us glucan synthesis on the membrane of the protoplast, they are functional and they're active. So sample preparation has been really difficult. The protocol is developed by Chris from our collaborator, David Berlin's lab. And then Jennifer in my lab learned how to do this. And now she started to prepare very beautiful plasma membrane fractions for our tomography study. So this is a movie of, we call it tube theory, basically raw data collected from the TEM. You can see that's a piece of membrane and then the small dots on the membrane representing membrane proteins. Okay, so here I'm showing you two tomograms reconstructed from tube theory as the one I showed you earlier. So the most obvious or abundant structure we can identify on those tomograms is kind of ring-like structure with a diameter of about 170 astron. And then those ring-like structure, they seem to form clusters across big regions of the membrane. The second structure we can identify from tomograms is a smaller ring-like structure where it's about 125 amino and um, astron in diameter. They also form clusters across the membrane. So here I'm going, I'm basically showing the section view of the two tomograms so that you can clearly compare the morphology and sizes of the two ring-like structures. Okay, so what are they? So we know in the inner fungal cell wall layer, the two most abundant structures are chitin and the glucan. And chitin synthesis has a smaller molecular weight compared to glucan synthesis. 
And then we also know glucan is more abundant in chitin. And then the most dominant structure in our tomograms are the large ring-like structure with a diameter of 170 astron. So we think based on those observations, we think maybe the large ring is the glucan synthesis and then the smaller rings are probably chitin synthesis. To test our postulation, we decided to construct cell strand that overexpress the FKS1 gene, the catalytic subunit of glucan synthesis. So from Vesna analysis, we can see those strains, they have about three to four times increase in their overexpression level, the expression level. And then we took plasma membrane from those overexpression strain, and then we did tomography using membrane fractions from those cells. So compared to the well type, we definitely see more of those large ring, large, large ring like structures in the tomograms collected from the overexpression strains. And it seems like the overexpression also shifted the distribution of the large ring like structure in the clusters to tighter packing compared to the well type. Based on the biochemistry data, tomography data, structure analysis, we think the large ring like structures is the glucan synthesis that we're looking for. So we also did subtomogram averaging using particles extracted from the tomograms of the plasma membrane to study the domain organization of glucan synthesis. This work is done by, started by postdoc Paul in the lab. And now Nikki, Jennifer, and a couple of graduate students are very actively working on this project. So if we compare the wild type here gray with the subtomogram average from the overexpression strip, the overall morphology very similar, but the structure from the overexpression strain has higher resolution just because there are more of them on the tomograms. So sub, um, resolution evaluation says the uh, overexpression strain subtomogram average has a resolution of 14 astrons. Basically, there's a nanometer resolution. So we did domain analysis. Each ring-like structure showed very strong six-fold symmetry, C6 symmetry. We believe each monomer in the hexamer is the FKS1 subunit. And then if you look at the side view, basically it has a membrane, it has an extra membrane density extruded from one side of it. If you still remember from the topology model I showed it earlier, the most dominant structure on the cytosolic side of topology modeling is the central um, catalytic domain. It's consistent with our structure observation from subtomogram average. So we think then this is the cytosolic domain, this is the external domain. And then the cytosolic domain, majority of the density should be the central catalytic domain. So as we're working really hard on this structure, high resolution structure of cellular synthesis from higher plant was published on science last year. So cellular synthesis in higher plant, they form a homo, homo trimer. And then each subunit has seven transmembrane alpha helices, and then also several helices and beta sheet in the cytosolic catalytic domain. And then each monomer in the trimer forms one glucan chain started from the catalytic active site extruding through a channel formed by transmembrane alpha helices to the external, the extracellular side of the membrane. So some structure analysis and modeling also said each trimer actually can form a higher order hexamer. So this organization is very meaningful because we know each glucan fiber generated from one subunit forms protofibro. So basically, three glucan fibers from a trimer will form a protofibro, and then each protofibro from one trimer combined with neighbors in the hexamer will form a microfiber. So we know the glucan synthesis and cellular synthesis, they both belong to a very large membrane, a large a family of glycosyltransferase family. 
So cellulose synthase is a very, belongs to a very large class called GT2 family. Many members in that family has been well characterized. The glucan synthase in fungal cells, it actually belongs to a very small family called GT48. There are only two members in the family. The other member is actually even less characterized than fungal glucan synthase. And also the two structures, glucan synthase and the cellular synthase, they only share less than 10% sequence identity. And also cellular synthase is a lot smaller than fungal glucan synthase. That basically I wanted to say structure information and molecular mechanisms we learn from cellular synthesis may not be directly applied to our understanding of fungal um, glucan synthesis, but there's something in common. We also notice from our tomograms because glucan synthesis is resolved in a membrane embedded form, we can look at the special distribution of the rings. They also form, seems like a higher assembly forming patches and then we actually did 2D classification on some of the tightly packed patches. They almost form 2D crystalline, you know, model, 2D crystalline packing, very tight with their neighbors. So why this packing is meaningful? Because we know in cellulose synthesis, you have to form from fibers to protofibers to microfibers. In fungal cell wall, Carry model suggests those glucans, they actually do not form higher order microfibers. After they reach certain threshold, they will be released by the enzyme to go through processing by other enzymes for branching elongation from the branch point and also cross-linking with chitins and other proteins, polysaccharide in the cell wall. So we think the formation of the hexamer and also formation of the patches probably suggest initiation of cell wall generation started from localized region on the plasma membrane. And also maybe the polysaccharide composition in fungal cell wall are not homogeneous. So now the ultimate question is how and where the it's drug- time to wrap up, Wei. Right drug binds to glucan synthase. So kinokinins basically, they share very similar chemical structure. They are lipid peptide with a big head made of six um, amino acids with long tail. If you look at the structure, they're basically a lipid with limited flexibility. So if we map the mutation on alpha uh, alpha fold release structure prediction, we notice the major mutation leading to clinical resistance actually are mapped in the exoplasmic domain of the membrane region, cross membrane region between the, the bundles formed by N terminal and C terminal domains. So we think this is what happened. Glucan synthase form a hexamer. Each monomer can make one glucan chain and then the drug binds to the extracellular domain, either blocking the glucan chain extrusion or somehow the conformational change can be transduced across the membrane to the active site, inhibit the activity. So to summarize my talk, from the glucan synthesis structure aspect, we were able to use cross electron tomography to study the membrane embedded structure at nanometer resolution and also look at the distribution on plasma membrane. From tomography, technical aspect, we know we can resolve structure by resolution limited by sample preparation and data processing. But low resolution information can still be informative because we can look at the overall domain organization and distribution. But can we see the drug binding pocket? Usually I will say no, but in this particular case, because the enzyme is rigid um, and also the drug is relatively big. I would say maybe in a couple of years in combination with integrative modeling structure prediction.
And that's all for my talk. I have to acknowledge our collaborator in David Perling's lab from Hackensa and our data collection is support by a group from Baylor, developer of Eman package, and also most of data collected downstairs in the Proteomics building from Rutgers Imaging Facility, some data support by Midwest Consortia from NIH, collected at Purdue University. That's all. Thank you for taking over. Now.